Welcome to the Nashville Stars franchise. Last episode coming off of the draft, we really did pick up, I think, at least three future MLB players in that draft, and I am excited to really build the future of this team, and I kind of want to build this organically. I don't want to, you know, build it by trading for big-name players. We're going to treat this like real life. We're an expansion team. Nobody really wants to play for us unless we throw a bunch of money at them, and we're not doing that right now. And we want to build, you know, this team through our young guys in the organization, so I'm happy about that. But looking at our outfield right now, we do still want to contend at the MLB level every year and obviously groom our future superstars. But in our outfield, we are absolutely struggling. Mercado, Robles, and Taylor, neither of them are hitting well at all. I mean, Mercado right now is hitting below 200. Taylor's hitting about 212. So that makes us look at, you know, kind of who is coming up in the future of our outfield because right now we don't really have too much. Now, looking at who our top outfield prospect is, is Kendrick Franklin Cole. He is B potential, 22 years old, 69 overall. You can just see the progression. He is getting better in everything. And I kind of want to check on him at the AAA level and see what he's working with right now. He's hitting 280, one of the best hitters in AAA right now. He is probably going to be an all-star also. So here he is in his first at bats here checking him out now one thing i love about kendrick franklin cole is you can just see in these highlights he hits the ball hard every single time even if he doesn't get on on base he's hitting the ball pretty solidly every single time and you can just see a good diving stop from the first baseman right there gets the out at first base but even on tough pitches i mean he's getting wood on it this one was just a ground ball to second base but i like what i see from him and also he is progressing at a very nice rate every single part of his attributes are going up which is a great sign and i really need a developmental outfielder because in the draft i really went after pitching hard and that was important because i definitely want to establish the future rotation at the mlb level and i think that that's the way to do it go through the draft obviously you know have these guys that come up and you can really groom to be the future of your staff. And I like the guys, at least in the infield in our organization, we don't have a ton in the outfield. So maybe even going into the trade deadline, I might be looking to add some outfield prospects that we can eventually groom. Heading into the all-star break pretty soon, we have a couple of guys who have really surprised me with the all-star voting. Our top vote getter as far as pitching goes is Elizar Hernandez. 126,000 votes. He has uh, 83 innings pitched. He is pitching not too bad. He's 5-4. and four. And he's ahead of Chris Paddock, which is surprising to me. But the top vote getter in our entire organization is Jorge Alfaro. I do want to check him out a little closer because going into the expansion draft, I did not think that he would be, you know, a key cog in the future of the organization. I took two catchers, hoping that, you know, Jorge or uh, Nottingham would be the guys that would kind of, you know, be good platoon guys. But I did not think that Jorge Alfaro would be the best hitter at the MLB level right now. And that's pretty much what he has shown to be. You can just see here in a few at-bats, we are player locking with him. Unfortunately, with player lock, when you go into a custom stadium, the customizations don't stay. That's why you see this empty looking field here. This is actually Music City Field. But Jorge Faro is really good. I've been hitting him at the leadoff spot because he does get on at the highest clip with a pretty good on base percentage for the Nashville Stars. But I think that, you know, in the future, I don't see him as a uh, leadoff hitter for sure. I think right now he is our best leadoff uh, option, but I don't think he's a leadoff hitter. I think he's more of like a 5-6 type of bat. I don't know about, about even 5, but it, at least he gets on base quite a bit, so I really see him as maybe like a 6-hole hitter, and hopefully you know, we can kind of build up our future here with him. Now we look at our other top vote getter in uh, the MLB level, at the MLB level, Elizar Hernandez. I haven't really checked him out on the mound, and here he's facing a tough Chicago White Sox lineup. So we will see what he can do on the road versus a really, I don't want, I want to say a dark horse, but I think they are a very underrated team in the MLB this year. They are definitely going to make some noise for sure. 
He gets the first two outs of the game here. That one was right over the middle for Lieri Garcia. And then who here comes Jose Abreu, Abreu, who goes to opposite field for the first hit of the game for the White Sox. That brings up Yasmani Grindal, the big hitting catcher behind the plate. And that one will be a strike three. Elizar gets out of the first inning. No damage done, giving up one hit. But here he faces Luis Robert here in the second inning. And that one will be crushed. That's a home run. That's actually Aloy Jimenez who gets a hold of that one, not Luis Robert. But look at that. I mean, just a no doubt home run over the left field wall. 111 exit velocity. It was absolutely crushed. And that brings up Robert here in the sixth spot. Ground ball to Miguel Rojas at short. A long throw. Robert with excellent speed will beat that one out. And Elizar giving up a couple of hits here in this inning. Then he settles down a little bit, gets Sheets to swing and miss at that pitch low in the zone for the first out of the second inning. It brings up Moncada, who was once the best, uh, the top prospect in baseball. That one's going to be a stolen base by Robert. This at bat continues. Moncada will ground out to third. Chad Pender with a throw to first base. And we do get the second out of the inning. Two outs, Adam Engel to the plate. Hits a hard line shot to short. And look at the play by Miguel Rojas, but the throw is offline. That would have been an excellent play there for the veteran. Now runners on the corners. That brings up the top of the order, Tim Anderson. But a ground ball to Rojas this time. Easy throw to first base. He does get the runner. Only one run of damage in that inning. On to the fourth inning. That brings up Robert again, and he hits a bloop, sh bloop shot to left field. That one will drop in front of Mercado, so now they have a man on first base. Last time he was on first, he swiped second. This time he goes again, and he will swipe it again. His second stolen base of the evening. They have a runner in scoring position with one out. Good jump by Robert as his at-bat does move on to the next batter. That's Yoan Mancada, who swings and misses at some high heat. For the second out of the inning, will we get out of this inning? Not giving up a run as well as that brings up Adam Engel again. Strike three. Elizar Hernandez pitches a couple of few, a few good innings. And now in the sixth inning, we end up taking the five to one lead. I really wanted to focus on our potential all-stars here. So Jorge Alfaro and also Elizar Hernandez. But here I wanted to just see what Jorge Alfaro does at the plate. He walked and then that brought up Dominic Smith who absolutely crushes one to right field, a diving stop, but it will not be corralled. And now we have runners on first and third with Jesus Aguilar to the plate. And he loads up the bases bringing up Eric Sogard, who has been playing quite a bit since Eric, er, since Chad Pender's been struggling, and he hits one well to center field. Robert giving chase. This one will be enough for a sacrifice fly to center. It will be a 6-1 to one game here on the road versus the White Sox. And a pretty good outing here for Elizar. Only giving up one run so far, and the run support is finally coming in. Chad Pender comes up, starting at third today, but he does not get enough wood on this pitch. It's just a fly ball to left field. As we move on to the bottom of the six, Elizar still on the mound here. A line shot to first and a stop by the big man, Jesus Aguilar, at first base. Grandal hits it hard, but it stopped. And they were former teammates, I believe, in Milwaukee. As we go to our bullpen, we do bring in Luke Jackson. That will be the end of Elizar Hernandez's day. But a good outing from the young pitcher who I really do think is going to be a big part of the future. And Luke Jackson comes in, in that inning, pitches all the way to the ninth inning, and gets us out of this game with a victory, 6-1. to one. We get 12 hits in this game. And Chicago actually gets eight, but they don't manufacture and he runs. How about Tyrone Taylor with a big game today? Hopefully that gets him going three for four, maybe even boosts his trade value going into the trade deadline. So going through the month of June, we just like get kind of hot, then we kind of cool off, then really get cooled off and then get kind of hot. It's, it's kind of just a hot and cold team right now. This was expected 35 and 48 at the end of June. We even included a 14 to four. This was the most runs we produced all year versus the Seattle Mariners on the road. They are 40 and 43. And you can just see here, Dominic Smith went two for four. Alfaro went three for four in that game with five RBIs. So, I mean, he is just having a good year. 
could be his first all-star bid. A couple of guys who are struggling, though. Dominic Smith is only hitting 228, 289 on base percentage, only slugging 342. I mean, that is not good at all. And for a guy that's supposed to be perhaps our three hitter, not doing well. It makes you kind of think, you know, this is more of a trial period for a lot of players. And is Dominic Smith maybe the guy that we should be looking to move on from? But because I like his hitting zones and his attributes, I'm going to keep him around, but we'll see how he does in the future. But Tyrone Taylor is definitely the biggest disappointment. I thought that he would be a good hitter. His hitting zones are all blue, but I didn't let that distract me from his attributes because he's good defensively. He also has good hitting attributes, but he is just not doing well. Chad Pinder also is struggling, and he is a veteran and a free agent this year, so he's definitely a guy I'm going to be looking to move on from at the trade deadline. Oscar Mercado, I do still like him. He's He's got a cheap contract, and I like his uh, ability to uh, really field well in left field. I think that's kind of an underrated thing for him, and I want to stick with you know guys that are good fielders in the outfield, not just big bats. And I think I need to keep at least one of my good corner outfielders. So I'm leaning towards Tyrone Taylor being the guy that could get shipped out along with Chad Pinder. I look at some potential trade partners and I look at the Chicago Cubs. They have kind of an influx of middle infielders that they could move on from. Nico Horner is kind of uh, there up the middle along with Nick Madrigal. Then they have James Triantos, who I think was their first round draft pick in 2021. And he's only seen potential, but a 75 overall at 19 years old. I mean, that is kind of unheard of. Hitting 292 at AAA, 333 on base percentage. Very, very good. I want to keep him in mind. I have seen that so far in this franchise. There have been 2021 first round picks who have been traded. Uh, we will take a look at some of those in the next coming episodes as well. Looking at the Seattle Mariners, they have an influx of outfielders. So I am definitely looking at adding an outfielder here. Dom Thompson Williams is one of those guys. He is 26 years old. He kind of compares to Tyrone Taylor a little bit, so I'm not that high on him. But one guy I am really high on is Taylor Trammell. I want a guy that's just different, and Taylor Trammell is different. He had his chance at the MLB level last year, but he's still only 24 years old. Now, he is no longer a top 30 prospect for the Seattle Americans organization. I looked it up on uh, you know, the MLB uh, Pipeline website and seeing their top 30 prospects, and Termel is not even listed. Look at the power, though. 86 versus right. I am definitely willing to take, take a chance on him just because of that. I would rather him have you know a good DH spot on our team than be a guy that we don't take a chance on and then we miss out on you know a big bat. So I definitely am looking for him to be one of the guys that we acquire at the trade deadline. And then Ha Song Kim is going to be another guy who I really like. He comes over from South Korea last year. He played quite a bit because of Tatis' injury. He's very good defensively. His bat is the one thing that's lagging behind. He is known as one of the best gloves in Korea. I believe he won a gold glove in South Korea. So uh, definitely want to you know, keep my eye on him as a depth guy. Not necessarily a cornerstone shortstop or middle infielder, but he has a high overall. He'll definitely probably play over our current options. But then looking at, you know, why they would trade him. I mean, they have Jackson Merrill, who they drafted in the first round. He is very good. They also have CJ Abrams, who is their top prospect. I mean, they have an influx of middle infielders, so I don't think they would miss Kim at all. So we start the month of July playing against the Texas Rangers, who are really really bad they are worse than what we are i think we are kind of fighting for the number one pick come next year in texas we end up beating them two out of three so that is a good sign that we're at least winning games but then we get an injury our first major injury at the mlb level eli white who is one of those depth outfielders who we have he's going to be out with the herniated disc now this is an injury that would probably take you out for the season a herniated disc is nothing to play with but he's going to go on the 60-day DL, and I'm going to go ahead, and, oh, go ahead and move up Nick Williams. I don't want to move any of our top prospects up right now if they're not ready. So I want to just at least move up a guy that has MLB experience. I'm going to move up Nick Williams to the MLB level. So heading into the All-Star break, we get our first trade offer. This one from the Miami Marlins, and they want Miguel Rojas back. 
That's so funny. As soon as we draft him in the expansion draft, they want him right back. But I'm just not willing to give up Rojas. I think that, you know, he's just a guy that's going to be a veteran and kind of a mentor for the next crop of middle infielders for us. And we don't really have, you know, somebody that's ready at this moment. We just saw that uh, Ha Song Kim is one of those guys we're looking after. And then we looked at a couple of episodes ago or even last episode, you know, some of our middle infield prospects. But they're trying to trade Roman Quinn, who is decent. But like I said, another guy that kind of is just like Tyrone Taylor, a lot of blue zones in his hitting zones and not hitting the ball well. So I don't want to go after him right now. The Yankees end up making a huge move, though, as they move on from Jason Dominguez, who I think is their top prospect in the organization. They acquire Brian Reynolds, who isn't probably expecting in real life to move. And he goes to the Yankees. The Yankees just keep spending money and keep trying to go for those chips. And they add one of the best outfielders, probably the most underrated outfielder uh, in the game today in Brian Reynolds. The Miami Marlins just don't stop, though. They pick up the phone and call again, this time offering Brian De La Cruz. This is even a worse offer because he's deep potential. He is younger, but I'm not going to trade for a deep potential guy and give up our starting shortstop. So we definitely decline that pretty quickly. Now, All-Star Weekend is ahead of us, and we get to the Futures game first before getting there, and we get to check out Jack Leiter, who is playing with the Futures on the AL side. And then we have a couple of players here. How about Kendrick Franklin Cole hitting in that three spot? We did not fix this lineup. We just kind of played it how the CPU kind of put it there, and he's hitting three. I'm happy about this. He is one of the That tells me that he is one of the best hitters in baseball at 22 years old in the minor league system. And then Kerry Doss, who is our number one prospect right now as far as rankings go. He is actually going, you know, pretty weirdly uh, progressing because he's going up in certain categories, going down in certain categories, kind of staying the same at that 67 overall. He's not like Kendra Franklin Cole, who is progressing pretty much all around. So here's his first at bat here in this game. He gets a low pitch, a slider, actually a changeup, and he just check swings and the ump says he goes around. And he will get called out on that pitch. Gary Doss up to the plate, who's got some big potential power, and I'm looking forward to his development. He swings and misses at a changeup as well out of the zone, and he strikes out on that one. 0 for 3 for Kendrick Franklin Cole until the seventh inning as he gets a pitch inside. That one will be ball four. He walks and is aboard for the first time today facing uh, one of their relief pitchers there at the on the mound as we move on to the eighth inning Kerry Doss also 0 for 3 he gets a pitch over the middle though and this one isn't missed that's a home run that's why we have him as our number one prospect because if he displays that type of power and that type of potential with his bat especially being an a potential guy he's definitely going to be a big time power bat in the future of organization I am looking for him to pro progress a little bit more I want to see him kind of at that 70 overall at the start of next year. But he's kind of stuck around that 67 overall this year. Hopefully that does go up. But we do get the win for the futures here for the AL. Jack Leiter actually gets player of the game. He is one of the uh, top prospects for the Texas Rangers. And we get the win there and move on to the double-A all-star game. I am more interested in the double-A all-star game because we have a couple of prospects who I really need to see, you know, what we have from them. G John Dumont is uh, our top middle infield prospect in the organization, but Tyson King is a guy that's hitting 290, 21 home runs here in double-A. That leads all of double-A in home runs. I want to see what else we have from him. Is he that next guy to move up because I do need a big bat in the lineup. We're not getting many hits at the MLB level. So let's see what John Dumont can do in this game. Maybe he is the next guy to be moved up. Who knows? Here is first at bat. This is where he excels. He walks and gets on base. He's hitting 323. He's got an on base percentage that is a close to 380. So he is very, very good at especially being a leadoff hitter. Here comes Tyson King. He hits one hard to second base and cannot get on board, got, get on base at that at-bat. Here is John Dumont in his second at-bat. He hits one up the middle and gets on again. This is where I think that he will excel 
And this is what I am missing right now at the MLB level, a guy that can get on base, a guy that can score runs. We will definitely look at his stats at the end of the year, but right now he is one of the best guys at getting on base in the organization. That brings up Kerry Doss, who goes to right field. Remember, we just saw him in the Futures game. Here he is in the double-A All-Star game, and he makes it to third with an RBI triple. And Doss has that big power. You can see it in these two games as that brings up Tyson King again. 0 for 3 in this game, but we'll see if he can get his first hit of the day. 2-1 pitch over the middle. He hits one hard to the left side. That one does get through. He comes through with an RBI. How about both of our players getting the only two RBIs in this game, at least until the eighth inning? And we end up winning 2-1 to one for our uh, AA All-Stars. And it's good to see Kerry Doss having that power. John Dumont getting on base. That's definitely what I want to see from him. One, one hit for each of them in this game. And the AL ends up getting the win as we move on to the MLB level. Now, one thing I do like about our MLB team is that, you know, we have options at each position to kind of, you know, groom and kind of see like where we have holes at and things like that. I kind of like to see those things early and see where we need to draft, see where we need to develop, see where we need to trade. And I think that catcher is kind of showing to be a position that we don't need anybody right now because Jorge Alfaro is hitting well. 263, it's not like the greatest average, but it's the best on the team right now. And Nottingham isn't too far behind. I believe he's hitting 250. So I will take that from the catcher position. And I really love what Alfaro is doing. Here he is for his only at bat here in the All-Star game. He gets an off-speed pitch. It goes the opposite way. That one gets down the right field line. It will score one. It will score two. The third run is going to be waved home. And the throw to third base will not be in time to get Jorge Alfaro. A bases clearing triple for our only All-Star. That's all you can hope for as Alfaro at least putting Nashville on the map here, getting that hit. And that ends up being the only highlight of that game for our All-Star as we move towards the trade deadline. How about Nicky Lopez being moved on to the Cardinals? And the Cardinals get Joshua Baez, who I think was a first round draft pick of the Royals. And you can just see here uh, from the Cardinals, I meant, 18 years old, B potential, 71 overall. We are seeing a lot of top prospects move before the trade deadline, which shows that these prospects are available. So I definitely have my eyes open for a lot of these guys, and I am looking forward to seeing who we can acquire, at least to be a future you know, piece of uh, the future, obviously, as a prospect. I look at third base, though, and Josh Fuentes is actually doing really, really well, at least for what we got for him as value. He's 29 years old, 74 overall, C potential. He's hitting about 250. Isn't too bad. I mean, that's what you would hope for out of Fuentes. But then we have Tyson King coming up, and I think he could be ready for his debut pretty soon at the MLB level. We'll have to see because he is leading double A in home runs with 21. He's definitely a guy I am looking forward to having at the MLB level, especially with John Dumont. I think that he is not probably going to be moved up just because I don't want to ruin his uh, overall growth. Kendrick Franklin Cole is close as well, but I'm not sure I'll move him up either. I just want to keep them down and keep developing them. I think Tyson King is probably the closest just based on what we need. We're going to be trading Chad Pinder. Who knows we're going to get back another infielder. So I think that Tyson King is probably the closest. And then Robert Suzuki, who was one of our top relief pitching prospects. Man, he looks good. He's at 76 overall right now, 20 years old. Suzuki probably will be moved up next episode or so. So that will do it. I will not go into the trade deadline in this episode, but I did want to give you guys at least a kind of a heads up on where you think we're kind of headed with the trade deadline. I'm definitely thinking about trading Chad Pinder. I mean, I'm definitely going to trade Chad Pinder. I don't want to say definitely thinking about, but then one of the corner outfielders, whether that be Mercado and Tyrone Taylor and see what we can get back in trade as far as prospects. So that's going to do it. Let me know who you guys think we should go after at the trade deadline. As far as the guys we listed, I'm looking forward to that episode and acquiring some prospects. Hit subscribe, 
hit that like button. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.